The social media giant Facebook and its Instagram and WhatsApp services have been hit by widespread outages. Facebook says it's aware some people are having trouble accessing the platforms, but hasn't said what's behind the problem. Well, let's speak to Ian Sher about this. He's the editor-at-large at the consumer tech site CNET and he's joining us uh, from Maryland in the U.S. Very good to have you with us. Uh, uh, tell us about what this all is about. I mean, Facebook says some users, but this looks like a, a global outage. How widespread is it? Well, <laughs> it's hard to tell. I will say that when we're talking about Facebook, more than half the world's online population is using it every month. So, you know, a few users can be a lot of users. <laughs> but this is this is a significant look, these these outages happen from time to time. Right. Sometimes they are the result of bad behavior, hacks or something. Other times it's someone who pushed the wrong button. And this time it seems like it may have been not a bad thing. It may have been someone pushed the wrong button or right. some computer is misconfigured and that'll get fixed at some point. But this has been going on for over an hour now, which is long, Yeah, yeah? It is long. And look, these things tend to be unusual because Facebook in particular really prides itself on working really well. You know, over the last, I'd say, five, 10 years, we've seen Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, all of them have been relatively stable. Before that, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty normal for the internet to kind of go in and out and some websites not to work. Uh, you can look up the Twitter fail whale if you remember that period of internet history. So, you know, this stuff did happen, but it is unusual more so now. And so, yeah, having it out for an hour is definitely uh, noteworthy. And this is coming in a day after a whistleblower revealed that the company Facebook prioritized profit over public good. And we know that political pressure yeah. has been building on the company. We're not speculating, of course, here, whether there's a link between that and what's happening today. But I'm wondering, you know, with all this bad publicity right now for Facebook and, and this political pressure, can, can the company withstand all this bad pressure and bad publicity? What do they have to do to change things around? Yeah, I mean, look, I think that they are under a, a really a lot of pressure from all over the place, right? Not just uh, their critics and people like me in Silicon Valley, but also you've got the regulators in Washington all over the world. And look, it's very clear that Facebook needs to really reckon with what they have done, what, both in terms of actually allowing bad behavior to continue happening on their platform and how they haven't been honest and forthright with you and me and everybody else about how bad the situation is. And that that is a really big problem. How bad is the situation? I mean, it's very clear that uh, that harassment and uh, the spread of disinformation, mm -hmm. undermining democracy, all of these things have been happening on a wider scale than Facebook has told us about. We don't have access to any data mm. that actually tells us. All we have are little slivers of information. Right. So it is a big, big problem. And the company has shown internally that they know that. Right. That's what the whistleblower, of course, revealed uh, in... Um in uh, reports that we, we read about yesterday, you know, when you see all this in, you wonder, of course, if, you know, one company, Facebook, owning multiple major online platforms is a good idea. What can regulators do about this? Yeah, I mean, look, there's been efforts inside of Washington to talk about whether or not Facebook should be forced to be broken up. You may remember that 20 years ago, that conversation was happening around Microsoft. And the way that turned out was that even though Microsoft was found to be a monopoly, all the government did was slap it on the wrist and allow it to continue being Microsoft. So I don't know exactly how far the U.S. government's going to be willing to go here, but I am curious to see whether this appetite for reigning in the tech industry will be any different from what it was a couple of decades ago. Thank you so much for talking to us about this. Ian Sher from CNET joining us there from Maryland. Thank you for your time. Thank you.